we have really quite an array of wildlife here uh, because we have a beautiful riparian corridor. Um, we have a really healthy pinyon juniper woodland. And all of it accesses then some open meadow space. Five fifty here intersects a movement corridor for our large game species. They move from these summer ranges and they try to access some of the winter forage that they can get at these lower elevations here. So it presents conflict between our motorists and traveling wildlife. So this one must have gotten trapped inside the right of way, hit by a vehicle and was thrown over. We have about 14,000 animal collisions on our highways every year. Uh, nationally, two million insurance claims for wildlife vehicle collisions. We keep encroaching, encroaching, encroaching. So we're creating this problem where essentially we're, we're making their migratory path impermeable to movement. So these techniques that the highway departments and the, and the state wildlife agencies are using to mitigate this now is, is really, really great for conservation. This particular section of road has an average annual daily traffic of around 8,300. And science has shown that highways with traffic volumes of 9,000 cars a day create an almost permanent barrier to wildlife movement. So we see a lot of collisions on this road. When we mitigate for wildlife vehicle collisions on the highway, we provide a whole system. The system is comprised of eight foot high wildlife exclusionary fencing that you can see here on the side of the road. Inevitably, animals will get into the right of way, so we always provide deer escape ramps, which you can see. And that allows animals that get trapped within the right of way a chance to escape the right of way and get back into the habitat. And then at every access point, we then have to install cattle guard or deer guards in this case. And it basically prevents the animals from walking through the openings that we have in the fence. All that fencing and the wildlife jump outs really are tied to the wildlife crossing structures themselves, which allow the animals to safely move underneath the highway. We pinpointed this where we saw a number of accidents. They used it within two weeks of us pulling the construction equipment off the project site. We had animals utilizing the structure. You want it to be as open as you can possibly get it and animals really won't use a structure unless they can see daylight through it. The crossing structures themselves cost anywhere between $750,000 to a million dollars to construct. But when you are reducing the rate of accidents to the degree that we are, they do end up paying for themselves by the benefit that they provide over a 10 to a 15 year period. We're approaching the proposed location for our large game crossing structure for this piece of US 550. The department is fully aware uh, that we're responsible for trying to eliminate some of the barriers that our transportation infrastructure has created. And this is just an example of what we're trying to avoid. So this will be a project that will allow us to try to keep these movements in place enable the wildlife to get to the resources that unfortunately this essential highway has blocked and complicated for these animals who've been traveling on this corridor for eons. Just like wildlife need to migrate across highways, fish need to migrate upstream through man-made barriers. This is a corrugated steel culvert that's been in the ground for approximately five decades. It's in failure mode, as is exhibited by the torn steel at the bottom of the outlet. It's a fish passage barrier because of the velocity of the water coming through the pipe. So they spend their last days on this earth jumping into a, into a stream that washes them back to where they started and they just try and try and try. They won't quit. They won't quit until it kills them. And they're all blocking salmon and steelhead from reaching their spawning and rearing habitat. As humans, we've created a lot of impacts across the landscape. And a lot of that development has had unintended consequences. 
but now we know better. This is an example of what can be done. And what you can see is that we've built the roadway that's completely out of the way of the natural process of the stream. Bringing in rocks similar to what's in the stream naturally. And so any fish at any life stage that can make it this far doesn't hit this migratory barrier anymore because the migratory barrier is gone. It's been replaced by a stream. And it's our responsibility to do everything that we can to reconnect habitat so that fish and wildlife can move freely. The Salmon Super Highway Program, what we do is we locate, identify, and evaluate culverts in this condition, we have many of them, and we put together a, a plan. We take this out of the ground, we excavate a wide enough channel that the stream can flow like a stream, and we build a permanent bridge structure over the top of it. Now that permanent bridge structure is built, they basically are built the last 100 years. We started working in 2014 on the actual replacement of the culverts. Since that time, we've completed 43 projects. We've reconnected 115 miles of habitat. We have federal, state, and local partners involved, different agencies and community groups, nonprofit organizations. We'd certainly like to see the salmon superhighway approach applied up and down the Oregon coast, where salmon and steelhead are threatened and declining. Now we know the effects that development has had on fish and wildlife and our ecosystems, so we need to collaboratively use our resources to give them the maximum habitat they need to thrive and survive. In the northern part of the Great Basin of the western United States, and uh, we're the Wadataka Nua, which is the Wada Eaters of uh, Northern Paiute Band. And our people have retained our Aboriginal rights to hunt and fish. Um, we had very limited economic resources. We always have, and so our people have continued to subsist to a great degree using traditional hunting and gathering practices and beliefs. We're not trophy hunters, so the value of the animals, they all have life and personhood, and um, the taking of their life isn't something to celebrate. We're taught that we have a reciprocal relationship with them that um, should remain in balance. The population of deer and elk are extremely important to the tribal members here. It provides us with the tribal first foods. Yeah, it provides sustenance, you know. My father instilled into me to provide before I eat. So I provide everybody uh, with meat before I eat. I link that to just having respect for our elders and those members who cannot hunt. Jonesboro holds a pretty special place in my heart. Um, that used to be our go-to spot to um, shed hunt. And every year we'd go back, I'd harvest a buck or a doe, and so would my family. And I've noticed the decline in um, quality of hunting out there. There's just less, less animals. You really notice it. We see a lot of mule deer and elk strikes in the area. Um, 20 to 40 percent declines in the adjacent populations. We're really concerned that the population's trending towards extinction eventually. And luckily, because there are these bridges, we're gonna be able to use those bridges and retrofit them so that wildlife can use them as well. So this is the way the animals would normally come. 
We just need some directional fencing into the bridge. They would likely just become habituated to using these safer passages. And so th that would be something that, you know, populations of deer would be able to learn because these mule deer are so critically important to the tribe. There's a lot of people that are really passionate about trying to find ways to address this. Our transportation infrastructure has a profound impact on the natural environment. And it is our responsibility to offset or mitigate the impacts that we're having to the natural landscape. We have to be the voice for the animals that are part of our large ecosystem family in order to help protect them and make sure that they can continue to exist and thrive.